Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the uh, Diabetes on a Budget project, where we talk about managing diabetes and other chronic healthcare conditions on a budget in the midst of an upcoming and worsening financial crisis and economic crisis that will hit the world, especially uh, the West. Uh, so I talked in last episode about the sugar part of the nutrition and what to pay attention to. Now, briefly to remind you, and if you haven't uh, viewed the previous videos, please go ahead and view them now so that you can get more context. But basically, uh, we said that there are three food groups, the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Of the carbohydrates for diabetes, there are three uh, categories, the good, the bad, and the ugly, good being fiber, bad being starch, and ugly being the sugars. We talked about the sugars last time, and this time I want to talk about the starches. When it comes to starches, there are two miscommunications that I see happen frequently between healthcare professionals and patients. And one of those communications is to try and be all or none, to say, well, just avoid them, just don't have any starches. Um, and the other um, part, which is to kind of communicate the message or the second miscommunication problem that happens is to say, just have things that are not white, that are dark, that are brown or yellow. So instead of having uh, white rice, you would have brown rice. Instead of having um, um, you know, uh, white potatoes, have sweet potatoes, for example. Now, um, what's wrong with, with that? And what's wrong with those two things? And as I mentioned before, all of this is done in a well-intentioned manner. The healthcare professionals do want to help and they do their best to help you, but there are sometimes miscommunications that can happen, and those are two classic ones that I want to address here. So what, the prob what is the problem with just stop eating starch? Well, the problem is it doesn't work, because uh, culturally and uh, you know, the way that most people were raised, uh, including me, of course, is to have starch with their meals. And the, the starch uh, with the meal being, whether it be uh, rice or potatoes or bread or something else, uh, is one of the big components, if not the main component, in the meal for a lot of people. Now, this is going to get more so and more, uh, they are going to be more dependent on the starch part of the meal as the economy uh, suffers. Uh, because when your personal finances are in jeopardy, you have to directly and, and ob obviously look at things that are less expensive to purchase. Now, those starches are less expensive than, let's say, proteins or uh, other you know, fancier food items or things of that nature. So uh, rice or, or bread or you know, potatoes are still relatively inexpensive compared to the other food items uh, that a person may get, especially you know when you compare it to proteins such as meat and eggs, uh, those the, the prices of those have skyrocketed, uh, and so people depend a lot on the starches uh, and will depend more and more on them as a part of their diet. Obviously, for a person with diabetes, you, you have to be careful. Now, being careful is not the same as completely stopping those starches because as we said, it's not uh, you know, feasible or possible and not essential either to control your uh, diabetes. You can have some starch with the meal without it being the main part of the meal or without it being such a big volume, such a, a big amount that it uh, affects your blood sugar in a major way. Now, the second miscommunication that I mentioned is to say, well, just don't eat anything white. And the problem with that, it's, it's too simple um, and it ignores the fact that uh, carbohydrates that are dark are also carbohydrates. They are still carbohydrates. So for example, uh, white rice versus brown rice. There is no doubt that eating brown rice or quinoa or buckwheat or barley 
is better as a source of a starch than white rice. Why is that, you may ask, is because the glycemic index, which is one of the things that we talked about in previous episodes of the dark starches is less than the glycemic index of the white starches. So the sugar in the, the, the dark starches, like brown rice, for example, would hit your bloodstream much slower and much gentler than the uh, sugar coming from white rice, for example, would hit your bloodstream. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that the dark starches are safe. And that's something that a lot of people misunderstand, whether it be patients or healthcare professionals. They think that it, you know, if, if you just had brown rice or sweet potatoes or buckwheat or you know, these uh, uh, things, instead of having white rice, white uh, bread, uh, and so on, you would be okay, that your, your blood sugar would be good. No, not necessarily, because the main component uh, and the main thing that you have to pay attention to is how much, what is the amount of the starch that you're getting, whether it be white or dark, it's still going to matter how much of it that you get. And if you end up getting a lot of whole wheat bread or a lot of brown rice, you're still going to have a problem. You're still going to have rise in the blood sugar as a result. Okay, so what is a good approach to uh, starches? How do we think about starches? If we, if we can have starches, we are not supposed to completely eliminate them, or, nor is it feasible to eliminate them completely. And at the same time, we are not going to just simply depend on the dark starches. How do we approach the starch issue with the meal by three things that I want you to remember. One is one option, two is one portion, and three is go for dark if possible. So one option, one portion, go for dark if possible. What does that mean? One option, that's very important. One option means choose one option for starch in your meal. Do not uh, go for multiple starch options because you know it, it relates in a way to the amount of starches that you are getting, okay? If you it's, limit yourself or you, you choose one option of a starch, let's say rice with, with your uh, dinner, then you can limit the amount of rice and therefore limit the amount of starches that you're getting. But if you're getting three kinds of starches with the meal, rice and potatoes and corn, well, that's three kinds of starches. Even if you limited the amount of rice that you're getting, you're still getting three kinds of starches. So all three will add up together and make the amount of starches coming into your body, the amount of sugar coming into your body very high, too high for your body to handle. And therefore your sugar will go much higher after the meal. All right, the, uh, it's very important when we talk about one option is to know what is a starch option because this is a blind spot for a lot of people. A starch uh, can take the form of something dark. Again, if you're getting brown rice and you say, well, because I'm getting brown rice, I can have as much as I want. No, you can't. That's going to still affect your blood sugar. Quantity limitation is extremely important. The second thing is that there are some uh, uh, things that people typically think of as vegetables, but they are not really vegetables. They are mainly starches. Right, so, so uh, there is an, a video that I had done previously. Go back and look uh, uh, for it on this channel. It's called Vinos. What are Vinos? They are vegetables in name only. And I just try to make that name kind of attractive so that you can, you'd be curious to know what are Vinos, but basically Vinos are starchy vegetables. There are starchy vegetables, which are vegetables that that have a lot of starch content in them, they raise the blood sugar. Now, uh, examples of that are sweet peas, beans, lentils. Now, those are 
excellent choices for starch. If you were going to have a starch and you were choosing one of the best starches, I would say go for these, go for, go, go for beans, go for uh, uh, lentils, go for uh, uh, sweet peas. Yes, all of these are better uh, than something like a white rice or bread or um, pota white potatoes, for example. That is no doubt. But the thing is that they have starch in them. They are an option. So they have to be, if you're going to get some of those, you need to uh, uh, make sure that that is your option of a starch. You shouldn't be getting, for example, peas and corn and rice. I mean, that's three kinds of starch. Now you may think of it as, oh, I'm just getting rice as my starch, but you know the other two are vegetables. These are, as I explained, vinos. So when you are choosing one option, yes, they are a better option than something like bread or rice, but they are starch. So, so that has to be understood very well. One option allows you to have one starch every meal. So for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner, you can have a starch, but one starch. One starch uh, is all that you need. And you can vary the kind of starch that you get if you don't want to get bored, but be sure to understand what is a starch and that you have to take choose only one per meal, not two or three. So the second thing is one portion. What is a portion? So how much of a starch it should be your portion? One good way to assess it is a quarter of the plate. One quarter of the plate. Or if you, uh, you, know, if you wanna do it by uh, your hand size, like a closed fist of your hand, it should be around half, maybe slightly more than half of the size of the closed fist of your hand. That would be uh, the portion. Now you may say that's, that's really not much at all. Yeah, it's not much at all, but uh, at the same time, that's the amount that is needed, but you're getting some and that's the amount that is uh, needed because more than that, you're going to start having a lot of trouble with uh, blood sugar rising as a result of the starch that you consume. Okay, so we said one option, one portion, and number three is go for dark if possible. So you will say, well, wait a minute. I, I thought you said that those uh, uh, star dark starches are not safe. Yeah, no, they are not a, uh, a, 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 an option where you can have as much as you want without worrying about your blood sugar. Uh, absolutely, but they are much better. If you're comparing brown rice to white rice, well, which one is better? Well, brown rice is better. If you're comparing something like uh, sweet uh, peas, compare them to something like white bread. Which one is better? Well, sweet pea, peas are better. There is no doubt. But so if you're going to choose an option, let it be those darker ones rather than the white ones. But again, that doesn't mean that the white ones are you know, uh, 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 the only thing you have to avoid, but also uh, uh, I'm leaving the door open for you that you can have some of those white starches as much as you can try to go for the darker options. But I realize, and healthcare professionals, you need to realize too, that this might not be feasible, might not be technically feasible. Because a lot of people, I'll tell you that, it's very difficult for them to, uh, to get or to cook the dark, darker starches. For instance, I said, I, as I told you, white rice is much uh, cheaper than any of the other uh, starch options. But another thing is that, you know, the dark rice, the brown rice, it takes much longer to cook than white rice. If you are uh, uh, responsible for cooking for your family, then you want something that you can fix for the entire family to eat. I understand that. And obviously it's not possible to cook two meals, one for you and one for the rest of the family. It's just not feasible. So what happens is, yes, I'm leaving the door open for the white starches. If, if you can't get the darker starches, 
okay? And, and all you have is white starches, you're, you still can get the blood sugar under control as long as you follow the rule number one and the rule number two, which is just make it one option, all right? And make it one quarter of the plate. So you'll ask me, but how do I stay full? How do I get full? Well, the main part of your meal needs to be either vegetables or salad. That needs to be half of the plate, vegetables or salad. There are multiple vegetables that you could use. For example, green beans, okra, uh, Brussels sprouts, uh, uh, you name it, onions and uh, cucumbers, salads, a, a ton of spinach, kale, a lot of things that you could have uh, that are very healthy and fill you up and make you feel full. You can cook them in a variety of ways so that they become tasty. You can put onions and tomato sauce on them. You can have uh, uh, Mrs. Dash or some other form of, uh, you know, pepper or some uh, other, other ways to make the food more tasty. But basically going for those options is going to be much better for you than uh, uh, the uh, starches. And, and you want to do it uh, uh, half of the plate. My recommendation is you, you fill the plate first with those vegetables and salads, and then you uh, put in the starch. Because if you start with the starch, you will get a lot more than what you need. So when you're putting from the stovetop, for example, uh, the, the, the food on your plate, the first one to go on the plate should be the vegetables. And you need to make sure that you're putting a lot and that you're putting uh, half of the plate at least. And if you are hungry afterwards, and want to go for seconds, go for seconds from the vegetables, not from the starches. Uh, proteins is another issue, and we'll talk more about them in a separate episode, but I just want to point out that a lot of the vegetables have good amounts of protein. They are plant protein, but they are good amounts of protein. Uh, among the best are the green beans and beans in general. Now, you will no doubt say, Okay, but you told me that beans are vinos. They are a form of starch. They are starchy vegetables, so they can raise my blood sugar. Yes, but again, if you're going to go for one option, which one would you rather have? White rice that is just purely complex carbohydrates with high glycemic index makes your sugar go high, or would you rather have something like beans, lima beans or uh, 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 kidney beans or, you know, some, or black beans that are, uh, yes, they have starch. They will provide you with carbohydrates, but at the same time, they have good protein, they have fiber, they will fill you up, they will make you stay full. So you go for one option of that. That obviously is much a much better option than going for just a plain white starch. Okay. Now, uh, another thing about the uh, vegetable options that you put on your, your plate is a lot of people with the economic uh, crisis uh, and finances being tight, they are going to say, well, I, I just can't afford them. Well, I'll tell you, that's not exactly true. What you can't afford, which is another lesson to healthcare professionals. Healthcare professionals, please listen to this because a lot of you I know in a loving and kind way want to help your patients and you say, well, you need to eat organic. Organic food is extremely expensive. People cannot afford organic food, okay? So yes, it would be better to eat organic. There is no doubt and I can go full, uh, you know, fully into that and why the organic is better than non-organic and so on. But we have to be realistic that this is not feasible for the majority of your patients, that they cannot be eating organics or uh, organic food or a shop from Whole Foods or whatnot. You know, the reality of things is that people, uh, you know, what they, when they go to shop, let's say they go to Walmart to shop, they will get uh, options of vegetables but the good news is that these vegetables are still going to be way better for health and way better for your diabetes. Even if they are not in an organic form, they are going to be way better than having something like 
sugar or plain white starch or things of that nature or juice or things of that nature. So how do you get it in a way that is inexpensive, but at the same time that you can use quickly? Because if you're, if you're uh, short on time, you don't have time to, to cook all day, or you have a job, you have work, you have things that you need to attend to, how do you do it? Well, you know, there are simple ways you could get big, uh, uh, mixed, prepared salad bags from uh, the store, and you can put them on the plate and add some uh, um, um, salad dressing to make them more tasty. Now, if you're asking about salad dressings, which ones are better and more diabetes friendly and more health friendly, those are going to be your uh, vinaigrette dressing, balsamic vinaigrette, particularly if uh, you, you want to change a little bit, a vinegar based dressing or something that has olive oil is always going to be healthier for you than something that uh, that doesn't. So probably if, if I were to choose the best dressings, I would say number one, balsamic vinaigrette. You can say uh, next uh, to it would be probably Italian dressing. Uh, the uh, the things that you, you want to stay away from uh, are uh, uh, the dressings that have fruit in their name, like raspberry vinaigrette, because there will be some sugar in, in that, in that dressing. Also, you want to be careful with um, uh, uh, dressings that have a very high content or a high content of saturated fat, such as uh, regular ranch dressing, Thousand Island dressing, French dressing. Uh, no, they are not going to specifically raise your blood sugar but they have a lot of saturated fat. So they add a lot of calories to you so they can make a person gain weight, but they also can are not very good from the health perspective. Now, if you want to have light, light ranch dressing, for example, or uh, uh, light uh, uh, French dressing or something of that niche, because you just like the taste, you want something to be tasty, well, fine, go ahead for that. But you know, if you were to choose, if I were to choose one, and as a matter of fact, what I do choose is, um, for me personally, is the balsamic vinaigrette dressing uh, as a dressing for my salad. So anyway, that is one thing to, to um, get the food that you need or get the, the salad that you need, get the vegetable part of your meal quickly. But another way is there are some bags that are microwavable that have mixed vegetables in them that you could put in the vegetables. Now you have to be careful what's in that bag. Just because it says it's a vegetable bag doesn't automatically mean that it is diabetes friendly because you could have one of those quote unquote vegetable bags that has corn and potatoes. Well, uh, clearly that's not going to be diabetes friendly. That has a lot of starch and carbohydrates, but you can get a lot of Brussels sprouts of green beans or of, uh, um, uh, vegetable medley, Asian vegetable medley, things of that nature that are going to be very healthy uh, for you. And you can just simply put the bag in the microwave for five minutes, and then you have a good Plate. Now you can add to it something to make it tasty as onions and uh, spices and things of that nature that we discussed before, but that's a very quick way to get your vegetable portion and it's not expensive. Those bags, remember, they fill you up because when you're eating and if you're really counting the expenses, you, you don't simply count the expense of the what you're eating right now. You have to also be mindful of what that meal will do to your hunger level. Because if you're eating right now something that will not satisfy your hunger, but make you more hungry later on, well, you may be saving money on this particular meal, but you know, you're not going to stay uh, uh, full. You're going to, in a couple of hours, you're going to be more hungry. And a classic example of that is cereal, where cereal, because it has such a high glycemic index, uh, it makes you much more hungry in a, in a couple of hours. You, you want to eat more. So cereal is not really a good option for breakfast. And if you were to choose something, probably a, a darker starch, if you want to have a starch with your breakfast, such as oatmeal, would be better for you than having a uh, cereal with, uh, with which a lot of people do cereal with milk and fruit. 
that's a deadly combination there. That, that's a lot of sugar that's going into your system without even any protein or healthy fat to tone it down. And so it results not just in the sugar spiking, but people getting really hungry in a short order of time. So yeah, so even when it comes to the financial consideration, you have to think what, I'm, uh, what I am putting in my body, how is it affecting me now? But how is it also affecting my finances in that it's making me more hungry, making me demand more food, and then I'm going to pay for that other food that I'm going to eat in between meals, that, that adds up to even the expenses, not to mention that it's not healthy for me. So all of these are very important considerations when it comes to starches. I hope this episode was helpful for you. And if it was, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And uh, looking forward to talking to you more in future episodes. Next time, we'll talk more about the fiber. And uh, um, please be on the lookout for the next episode. Thank you, and you have a great day.